Welcome to the Girl Power Alliance podcast, where you're going to meet and hear from some inspiring women with incredible stories who are leading in business and in faith. We are on a mission to impact the world by empowering women to dream bigger through kingdom-minded mentoring and leadership. This is where women grow. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I am so stoked. I have some, I am just blown away by these amazing guests that we've had on here today. And today is no exception. Let me tell you about this beautiful girl. If you're watching the video, you can see how beautiful she is. If you are listening, let me just tell you, She's beautiful. Okay. She is a copywriter for online coaches and course creators. She loves using her God-given skill of writing to help others build a connection with their ideal client and grow their businesses. She's a military spouse. Thank you for your service as a military spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, She's a mother of three who currently lives in the Florida Panhandle. She serves on the board of a nonprofit that helps foster children, foster children and their families um, with any of their physical and spiritual needs. And you can find her hanging out on the beautiful beaches of Florida and she is not doing all of that. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast here today. And um, I know I read your bio, but I would love for you to just share a little bit more with our listeners. Sure. Yeah. So um, I am a copywriter and an author, by the way, too. I have a book that I am working on getting out to the world that has nothing to do with copywriting. When, when, when? (laughs) I don't know yet. It's really literally in the process of trying to get it published and figuring out that whole world. Um, But it's all about grace as a mother and a wife and a Mm. sister in Christ. And um, so, yeah, I just, I love to write. And, um, I feel like God has given me this skill that I want to use it to serve. So that's why I went into the world of copywriting so that I can help businesses grow because without good copy, you you can really plateau. So when you get that element, you can really start to grow. And so you're serving more people. So it's like this great chain of service that I love to be a part of. Well, believe me, um, you are needed in the world for many, many reasons (laughs) as I continue to try to like write copy myself for what we're doing. So I, it is, it is a really, really big deal. And, you know, it's interesting because if you just think about like, what does it say in the Bible? It says first there was the word. (laughs) So it's a, it is a big, it is a really, really big, big calling. And um, so how long have you been doing it? What did you do? What did you do before you were, have you only done copywriting as a, in your career? Um, No. So I was a television news producer four years out of college, um, back about 15, 16 years ago. Gosh, I can't believe it's been that long. (laughs) Um, (laughs) it's just crazy. But, um, so yeah, I did that out of college. So basically I was in charge of running the live TV show. I worked for a CBS affiliate and, um, I was in charge of basically making sure the show was running in a way that made people want to watch. I helped it stay on time. I kind of managed the anchors and reporters. And then I would write those teasers that would come before the commercial break to help you want to stay tuned, you know? So I was kind of writing copy before I even knew. For sure. I was <laughs> because I was selling the audience on not changing the channel. So I did that for a while. And then I married my husband in the military and we started moving around a lot. Um, and so it's hard for military spouses to keep their careers mm-hmm. when you're moving every two to three years. So I did the stay at home mom thing. And that was great. It was fun. It was challenging. Um, I had three kids in five years. And my husband was gone a lot. So that was when I really grew in my relationship with the Lord and started leaning on him, you know, every day and really learning that was more of a relationship than a religion and just coming to know Jesus. And it just completely changed my life. That whole experience of being a stay at home mom and being alone a lot of the time and learning how to rely on God's strength and not my own. Um, and then about two years ago, my youngest was about to turn two. We didn't have any baby babies anymore. We knew we were done having children. And I started to feel like God was ready for me to do something else, like kind of start adding to my plate. And I hadn't said anything about it. Um, like I hadn't voiced that. Oh, this is my cat, by the way, <laughs> if you're watching. He we see his tail. <laughs> yeah. um, and then my husband brought up 
the idea of me possibly going back to work. And I hadn't even said anything to him. So, you know, when you get that like double confirmation, it's like, okay, God's talking to us here. But I didn't know what that was going to look like. Like I knew I wanted to write a book. I, should I get a job? You know, like, did I want to put my littles in daycare? Um, I wasn't really sure. So I started praying about it. And um, I knew I wanted to do kingdom work of some sort. And so I thought that meant I was going to have to work in a church. Yep. <laughs> and I, um, a good friend of mine was a virtual assistant for a church. So I thought that sounds amazing. Like she's working for the church, but she's at home with her kids. Like what a great balance. So I started looking into the virtual assistant world and God just made these connections for me, meeting people that helped me realize that my skill was writing and how I could kind of use that in this world instead of trying to be a virtual assistant. He just had a different plan for me. And so I discovered copywriting, realized I had kind of been doing that as a news producer anyway. And yeah, God just hooked me up with the right people to show me what I needed to know to get all of that started and get it moving. And then I quickly niched down to coaches and course creators because I felt like they were doing such a service in the world of helping people, you know, become the best version of themselves in whatever category they're in, whether it's fitness or finances or parenting or whatever. And so the thought of writing for them, like I said before, that chain of service, it just Mm -hmm. felt like I was like, you know what, I am doing kingdom work, you know, by being, you know, having integrity and being ethical and helping these women help other women. It's just been such a wonderful journey to get to this point and figure out that I can do this. I can be home with my kids. I can do something that I'm so passionate about. And I know that God led me all the way to here. Uh, Isn't that, I mean, it's. It's truly remarkable to me to hear stories like yours of how, you know, you took this, you took a step, like you just took a step and, and you listened to that voice. And I love it when God does that. So I use my husband always, he's always part of my kind of litmus test, you know, like I'll pray about something or whatever. And then I'll say it to him, like, what's his response? And I always wait and like, okay, God, what is, did you talk to him too about it? (laughs) You know, so like you had all, you had a series of all these things. So you felt the little nudge, right? And then your husband said that, then you took the step and it led you to the next step. I think it's a really important thing for, you know, women, even men, if you're listening, but we're probably going to have more women. But if you're listening to this, what happened for Chrissy was she took the step that led her to the next step. So you didn't get where you are today, niching down, being as specific as you are in your business from the first step. Right. Absolutely not. It was an entire journey of following God's guidance and the people that he placed in my life to help me see which direction to go. I mean, yeah, it was a total journey. From the time that you first began looking for a job as a virtual assistant to where you are today, like what's, how, how long was that? Um, let's see, it's been about two years, but I'd say it only took me about four months. That's fast. Um, deciding to take the leap of faith to just figuring out I wanted to be a copywriter and then maybe another month or two before I niche down to the coaches and course creators. I feel like that's actually fast. It might be. I don't know. You know, I've never done this before. It's my only experience with it. So it's hard to gauge, you know, but um, it felt, yeah, I guess it did feel kind of quickly the way that it all came together. I mean, I just think about stories in the Bible, like, you know, Joseph, 17 years. I mean, you think about some of these stories. So four months is pretty stinking fast. It's true. It's true. And I know he's not done yet either. I feel like I'm still evolving. I've started feeling a call to maybe do some coaching with my copywriting and helping people write for themselves, not just providing done for you writing. So I know it's still evolving. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I feel like once you've kind of dialed into that flow where you're really able to, um, to hear the Holy spirit with more confidence and I mean, that's the thing, I think. I think we're hearing it all the time, but we're just not confident in what we're hearing. But once you, like, you've taken all of these really remarkable steps leaning on what the Holy Spirit was guiding you to do. And so now you're more confident when you hear it. So you can be like, okay, I'm hearing this. So this is, I think this is where I'm going next. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
And gosh, what a powerful thing. So let me ask you this, because you're saying you're kind of moving into coaching, but in your current business now with, with creating and helping other content creators with their, really it's their image and what they're writing and cre- telling their story. Does, um, how is, how do you utilize that, that, uh, your faith and kind of that voice in doing that? Does it play a part at all? Oh my gosh, a hundred percent. And, you know, it took me a while to get to that place too. I think at first I kind of dove in and you get that whole, like, I have to do this and I have to do that. And you just think you're doing it all yourself. And then I realized I, I hit a point where I wasn't making a lot of traction and I realized God was missing, you know, from that aspect of my life that I wasn't remember remembering to tune back into him every day, multiple times a day. And so I've really worked on making God the true CEO of my business instead of myself. And so I, you know, I'm running my decisions past him instead of just making them myself. So I pray over every big decision. Um, I've had a couple of instances where I hired coaches myself that cost a fair amount of money. And, you know, that's a very prayerful decision. And my husband and I would pray over it together and because, you know, family finances and, um, it's just pretty much every decision throughout running a business, figuring out which clients to work with goes through God. And yeah, it's that feeling confident in what you're hearing from the Holy Spirit makes you so much more confident in your decisions. And it also makes it easier when you're, you know, when you have a discovery call with a client and you're trying to figure out whether you're going to work together or not. If you get the no, it's easier to take because I admit, I just realized, okay, well, God didn't mean for me to work with that person. Or maybe he didn't mean for me to work with that person right now. You know, it's a no might mean a yes later. And so I know that he's got my back and he, his plan is perfect and he's working all things for good. So if it doesn't work out with someone for us to work together, I, in the past, I may have been really bummed out on the lost revenue or something like that. Now it's just kind of like, okay, that's not the plan right now. That's fine. Let's move on. What can we do next? Have you ever told a client no? Um, I haven't yet. I, thankfully, I've not been in a situation where I've had to do that, but I know it's coming. It's inevitable for everybody <laughs> at some it's, point. It's been really interesting for me with, uh, with GPA because I am reaching out and hoping to connect with amazing women like you who are, you know, kingdom minded in your business. And, um, so I do these pre for the podcast, I do pre podcast kind of interviews and, um, I've had to, I've had to say no to a couple of people and it's really, I feel bad, but I feel super good at the same time. Like I feel bad because I hate to disappoint and you know what I mean? But the bottom line is I have, and I think that this is one of the things that happens when you really when you, when you have the, when you've developed the skill of listening to the Holy spirit is that clarity that you like, I, I'm not going to compromise. I won't compromise for the sake of the mission. So here with the girl power Alliance, you know, the, the whole mission here is to bring like-minded kingdom minded women, um, content, uh, interviews, courses, coaches that all have that in alignment. And so one of the things that I have found is, and I, I know that it'll probably happens to everybody is that I have had to choose between people with big influences Mm -hmm. that maybe don't line up and, or people that just don't share the same faith. Like apparently faith is a broad reaching term, which I'm learning now. It is now. And you know, I have, I have not had to say no to a client, but I have chosen to be selective in who I try to reach out to. And Mm -hmm. a lot of my client relationships are built on social media of people that I start engaging with and building a relationship and then eventually work into a conversation about how I can help them. And yes, I will be just like you're saying, I will be selective in who I start engaging with for the same reason, because I I want to work with like-minded people who have integrity and have similar values. I think it makes a big difference. I mean, if you're, if I'm, if I was looking for a copywriter and that copywriter didn't share the foundation of faith, the overall messaging just, it won't be this, it won't be lined up. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I'm not shy about having my face on my website 
and in my Instagram stories and posts all the time and on my Facebook page, because I, I understand that that will turn off some people, but that's okay for me because I don't really want to work with people that have been that are turned off in that way. And that doesn't mean that I wouldn't work with someone that didn't share my faith if it had nothing to do with what work we were doing. Um, but I do tend to attract like-minded people. And so it does make it that much easier, both in the copy that I'm writing for them and just how we interact when we have our calls and our emails back and forth and everything. I, I think what we've been taught is that you'll lose business because of that. But mm-hmm. I, I just, I believe that's a lie. I believe it's a lie. And I believe that it, that lie was perfectly positioned to keep us quiet. I agree. 100%. Yeah. I think it's, it is scary to think about turning people off or turning them away when you're first yes. getting started. But I think that God rewards us being true to ourselves and staying authentic. Well, I mean, your true superpower is when you get to fully be who God created you to be without worrying about that stuff. And so in the world today, I think it's really difficult to fully be that because what you're worried about people are going to think you're worried. They're not, I mean, especially because our lives are displayed via social media. And so it's like, well, if I say this, people are going to get mad or if I do this, but I believe again, I just believe the enemy wants so badly to filter us and not allow us to be wholly authentically who we are. But when we are, when we get to do that, like the most remarkable things begin to happen. The most, like the doors open, like I feel like your heart opens. I recorded a podcast with somebody to, uh, the other day and she said, after we were done, she goes, that felt so good to be able to talk about things that that I am so passionate about without worrying. Yes. Oh my goodness. It does. And you know, we face, we face a lot of lies from the enemy when we're, especially in this industry where you're working for yourself. And I, I will be transparent that I've had moments, especially in the first year where I thought, did I make the wrong choice? You know, should I have gotten a nine to five with a steady income? Because it takes some time when you're building your own business to actually start seeing a real profit. And I had moments where I really started to doubt that, but I never quit, you know, because I didn't never felt peace about quitting. I would start to think about it and I wasn't feeling that Holy Spirit guidance to give up at all. If anything, it was saying, no, no, stay the course, you know, and I did. And I feel like staying faithful that way and ignoring those lies God is starting to reward that, you know, as the business grows. Yeah, that's awesome. And it it takes um, fortitude, you know, and commitment to forge your own path. And, And I think you make decisions differently when you're guided, like with these kingdom principles, and then the rest of the world will be like, what are you doing? And why are you doing it that way? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it helps to just draw back um, on ways that God has done things for you in the past, you know, mm-hmm. ways that he has proven his love for you and shown his protection over you and times in your past where you thought things weren't going to work out and they did, or you got to know that led to an even more amazing. Yes. Those are the kind of things that keep me going. I just remember that stuff and, you know, just remember that he has been so faithful in my life. Yeah, absolutely. And so what would you say? Um, I heard you say it earlier that God like brought these kind of divine appointments into your life to just help your business to grow and succeed. Will you share that a little bit with people? Uh, I think sometimes people maybe aren't even aware of these, uh, these people that, that kind of come across your path. And I just think it's, again, God putting these little breadcrumbs out there, like keep going. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yes. So the first one, when I was first looking into being a virtual assistant, when I thought that was what I wanted to do, I had just posted in a local like mommy's Facebook group and said, is anyone here a virtual assistant? Can I, you know, have coffee with you and just talk to you about this world? And there was a girl who lived right down the street from me that I had didn't even know i had never met. We ended up connecting and she's the one that helped me dig through my skill set and mindset and figure out that copywriting was the best suited field for me. So that to me was completely a God thing that he prompted me to make that Facebook post, which was a little scary, you know, and then connected me with this person who lived in the same town as me doing the same thing I wanted to do. And then the way she helped me figure out, you know, going down the copywriting road was just amazing. How about that? That was like a free coach. 
Right. It really was. And I still, I mean, I talked to her this morning. We still talk, you know, it's, um, that was, that was the first one that was incredible to me that kind of felt like it fell out of the sky. And then about six months later, um, I, I bought some kind of entrepreneur bundle of courses. It was one of those like 20 courses for a hundred dollars thing. And the first one I took, um, was from a woman named Sarah Anna Powers who I had never heard of. And I, this is the only way I found her was in the middle of this bundle. I went to like the middle of the page and just clicked on her course. And she is a faith-based coach. And I had not heard anybody in the entrepreneur space at that point talking from a faith-based perspective. Mm. I just thought, this is amazing. She's incredible. And so I, I started working hard to get on her radar. And I found out that she had a coaching program that was opening up. And it was expensive. <laughs> it was premium, as she likes to say. And I just thought, there's no way. You know, like I had been in business for six months. I, I had had no profit at that point. You know, it was all <laughs> expenses. So how am I going to spend thousands of dollars on this? So at the same time, my husband and I had really been wanting to buy uh, an RV for our family. <laughs> we really wanted to have adventures and go camping. And we're like, we want to spend our money on this kind of thing. And we had put aside some money about two months before this was happening, where I was looking into this ex- premium coaching program. The money we had put aside was the exact amount of money down to the dollar of what that coaching program cost. And my husband said, you've got to use it. Oh, do this. She is faith-based. That's amazing. She's going to help you grow your business. She had a copywriting background before she was a coach. I mean, it was just all the stars were aligning, you know, God's plan was just, everything was lining up. And so we did, we spent the money and I joined her program. Now I want to say in the six months leading up to this point, we had been looking for the right RV that was in our price point with the right amount of mileage and in the best shape that was within like an eight hour drive so that we could go get it. So we'd spent the down payment money (laughs) two weeks after we spent the down payment money an RV popped up in our town (laughs) in our price range with the right amount of mileage that didn't need the down payment oh. and we were able to get it. And so we kind of just felt like we took that leap of faith by spending that money and following what God was prompting me to do. And then he rewarded us by still giving us what we had been going after, oh. you know? So that to me was just such an amazing God story too. <laughs> um, and then once he put Sarah and powers into my life, it opened up an incredible amount of doors for me. And I met so many other kingdom minded women that are in this entrepreneur space. And that has just grown exponentially ever since then and made, I've made some amazing Christian connections through that whole experience. So it's, wow. it was amazing. That That's so, you know, it reminds me when you were speaking, uh, sharing that story about the RV, have you ever seen the little meme? That's a child holding a teddy bear and Jesus is kneeling in front of the child saying, just give it to me, but he has this giant one behind him. One. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It just kind of reminds me of that. Like, it's so scary for us to take these steps because we don't know, you know, we don't know, but he's like, just do it. I got something even better for you. Exactly. Yeah. That is so awesome. If you had like one piece of advice for somebody that's listening and they're where you were like at the point that you were just beginning your journey as an entrepreneur and creating this business where you're where you've niched down, but before all of that, if you had one little like snippet, what, what would that be for somebody that's listening? It would be to pray all day long. (laughs) And I don't mean literally all day long, but all throughout the day, because when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, there are so many scary moments where you don't feel confident, you don't know if you're making the right decision, you have so many choices. It was very overwhelming and very stressful for me. And if I could go back, that's what I would do is I would pray over every choice. I would pray over my business every morning because it's very natural for me to pray over myself and pray over my family and my friends and anyone that's sick. And But I, I didn't remember to pray over my business. And you know, God gave this to me. He wants me to do this. So I should be praying over it, you know, and praying for his, his guidance and all the little stuff, not just praying that I will be successful, 
but praying over, you know, praying before we started recording this podcast, that it was going to go well and that I was going to have the wisdom and the courage to say everything, praying before calls with potential clients, uh, praying over every piece of copy that I send to a client, that it's going to do what he wants it to do, you know, just all those little things. That's what I wish I had been doing all along. And I'm so grateful that I'm doing now. I don't think that's little, I think it's huge. And I think that, that one, that one thing, if, I mean, there were tons of amazing things that you said during the whole podcast, but if you're listening or watching that one, like rewind and replay what she just said, this is such a powerful way to connect. And I feel like the more you do it, the easier it gets, number one, but number two, the more confident you are in what you hear and your decisions. So I relate to that so much. And sometimes you take a step, not totally knowing, but you've bathed it in prayer. So you have confidence in knowing that even if you make the wrong, you do a misstep or you make the wrong choice, that God's grace is going to fill in the gaps or correct it or whatever, but just bathing, bathing all of that in, you know, constant communication and prayer. And I believe he, you know, he just absolutely like guides our path in that, in that great way, or, or at least puts people in the path or protects us from people and decisions and, or, and, or gives us a better RV two weeks later. That's not eight hours away. That's a, that's an awesome, that was an awesome thing to share. Um, so if somebody is listening right now and they're just like, I'm in love with her, I want to work with her. How do I find her? Tell everybody how they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm at copywithchrissy.com. And Chrissy is C-H-R-I-S-S-I-E. And then I'm also at Copy with Chrissy on Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. And I will make sure that it's in the show notes of the podcast and in the little information section on our YouTube channel. And uh, I know you'll be hearing great things and potentially in the future here, copyright coaching. Yes, it's in the works. I think it's coming. (laughs) Yay, that's super exciting. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate you. Have an amazing week. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for hanging with us for that amazing interview. Remember, you can find us on Instagram at girlpoweralliance.com. You still have another day to get in on our giveaway. We're giving away a journaling Bible. Those are so cool, aren't they? And we're giving away some custom tabs that you can put inside your Bible. Head over there and find that post that you can enter. And don't forget, sign up on our wait list. Go to www.girlpoweralliance.com and you can get on our wait list to hear all of the updates before anybody else. And you know, we are always looking for like-minded, kingdom-minded collaborators. Do you want to be a guest on our podcast? Do you want to participate and collaborate? Or do you want to be one of our featured coaches? All you have to do is go to our website and click on the collaboration tab or the coaches tab. We are waiting for you. Girl Power Alliance, this is where women grow. We'll see you soon.